Blood Curse, Season 1, Episode 10, Blood Debt, Thoughts. So, spoilers for these 10 episodes, another episode I love, and yeah, so before I dive into the details, as far as I can tell, this is indeed the last episode. There don't appear to be any upcoming episodes. I will talk about my feelings about this being the very end at the end of this video. So, we, yeah, we open in 1998, and she actually survived all of that. Like, holy crap. Yeah, uh, Monique did indeed not die, and the, the, yeah, you know, she goes back to the, the home, and the, the trauma overwhelms her to the point where she passes out, which I appreciate they're really, like, they're not brushing past this. This is a big deal. And, yeah, she's found by, um, I think his name is Harun, and the, the grandmother, again, I really, I mean no disrespect, I'm just not great with names, it's not, like, some attempt to be racist or something. And, yeah, um, basically all three of them agree that revenge is the way to go, but, you know, the grandmother is like, we should, you know, we should be more, we should take our time with it. And, yeah, because the other two are impatient, they end up, you know, caught. This episode has some of the best, like, real visceral, real nasty, you know, the, the kind of stuff that we're watching this kind of horror for, you know, so really appreciate that. This was a big finish in that regard. I don't know what it is Monique has against people's fingers, but it's fairly consistent, and I'm here for it. It's just, that's one of those things that we just, we do not want to see, you know, so it's very effective horror. And, yeah, you know, they, the, the building is surrounded. You know, the, the, the cops shout, this is the CGI cops. We're taking you in for an overuse of fake CG blood. Which, you know, gets them 20 years, which seems kind of harsh, but it is fair. Seriously, though, that is the one thing that I wish... I get it. I get that there are a lot of those... A lot of times on the show where they use CG blood, where they absolutely could not have blood. I, it still is not quite convincing, and it's... it's yeah, anyway... And, yeah, uh, Wis Wisnu is attacked. Right, and I also I appreciate I'm probably mispronouncing all these names. I'm just going by how they're spelled. But, but yeah, you know, he's, he's attacked again, and, you know, Harna manages to, to cut it out. I appreciate that at the end of the episode, when Wisnu is attacked again, it's like at his, in his throat. So it's like, what's Harna gonna do? Cut his throat to save his life? That doesn't make any, you know, that's not at all gonna work, obviously. So, yeah, you know, despite what Harna has been able to do to, to stave it off, that's not something he can do anything about. And... Let's see, then we have the... Um... What on earth did I write? Okay, you're gonna have to move on. Yeah, and we yeah. <clears throat> the the Oh right, right, yeah. In yeah, so in twenty eighteen um Monique is let out and so she's taught the, the black magic by the grandmother and yeah you know the they're they're uh, the two of them are helping this this young woman and 
you know, yeah, they say this is the right thing to do. Now you can continue working. You won't be fired. You know, so we're again seeing there's there's a major theme over the course of the show of like powerful people treating powerless people badly. You know, and yeah, um, I'm not 100% sure, but it looked like an abortion they were performing, which, you know, yeah, like, if, if you live in a very conservative area, you can't go to a, a doctor to get that, you know, yeah, you, you might go to, you know, someone who works outside of the, you know, the, the boundaries for, for most people. And, you know, we see that because they, they help this young woman, they, yeah, they, they did the thing that she asked them for, now they, they target her. They're, they're, you know, the fact that she was forced to, to move outside of the system made her a, an easy target, you know, underlining that, because, because this is the thing, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing maybe she, like, yeah, so, I'm not 100% sure, because they specifically say that her boss might fire her, if not for this. So I'm guessing maybe she was sleeping with her boss, and when she became pregnant, if he found out that she was pregnant, he might fire her. I'm, I'm, I think that's what it is. Or maybe, because, like, would you get fired for... Honestly, I, I don't know enough. It's possible that she might get fired for having a baby even if it had nothing to do with with her boss you know that's it's, yeah there there are women who've been treated very badly for you know being at work and and then you know having a baby you know all over the world um so so yeah um if she if she hadn't been forced to go outside the system she would not have been within reach of these black magic practitioners and let's see yeah and it's also you know we've we've had some stuff about how awful it turns out that actually you know Wulan's father I'm going to keep calling him that because adoption does mean that you are technically the the father you know he treated her as his daughter for most of her life. Obviously that doesn't make it okay that he was responsible for these deaths, but the yes. Both Wulan's father and Mr. Bonden were have have done some incredibly evil things. The the you know, this episode really underlines yeah, the the black magic practitioners have also done some incredibly evil things. And, you know, it's it's very clear, like, they're not targeting this young woman who they, they provided some service for. They're not doing that because they think, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, we're, we're pro-life. We'll give you the abortion, but we're going to kill you after. No, no, no. It's because that she's an easy target. Well, what do they say? She's an orphan, and I feel like there was one other element to it. You know, she's an easy target. We'll, we'll you know... And, like, hypothetically, you know, it would be more difficult, but could they maybe target, like, they know where the prison is, Monique knows where the prison is, could they maybe, like, manage to, to sneak out some, some hair of someone who's in prison for killing someone? You know, I'm not saying that's right, but that would at least be, you know, a more, you know, if they, if they are determined to kill someone, and it's pretty clear at this point they are, you know, they, they don't have to kill a young woman who, who had to go outside the system to get an abortion so she wouldn't get fired. And... Let's see... Yeah, and they... they once, once Harun is back out of prison as well, they dig up the, the skull and, and drink from it, and that's again like, ugh, you know, that's... Because you, you can't help but imagine, you know. 
I wonder what that tastes like. I wonder what the consistency is like inside the mouth. Just, ugh. And, yeah, this is where Harun gets his white eyes burning like fire. Am I, get, am I getting his name right? I, I worry that I'm getting his name wrong. It's, hold on, I'll, I'll make sure, I'll try to look up. So let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm almost certain that his name is Harun. See, normally I, you know, I'm, I'm on the IMDb page. Normally there's a picture of the actor, but because they're not as well known in the West, there's no pictures. Anyway, um, <clears throat> that brings us to, yeah, and we see uh, Essa knocked out by a sep. And, yeah, um, Asep asked, you know, for this, you know, 50 million in, in dowry. Uh, what is that in, like, dollars? Uh, hold on. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, it's, you know, they consider it a lot of money. It's pretty clear that they... <laughs> they have that money they could do you know <clears throat> and these two rich people say oh that's too much you know and and he makes a pretty good case you know he's what did he say he's been looking for 40 years he's only found this one woman and she'll only marry him if if he has a 50 million dowry and it's, you know it's it's easy for them to say that that's too much you know, it's not too much for them to to lend him that money. They just don't want to. And I'm not saying, you know, that, that like, rich people should constantly be giving away, you know, a, a lot of money, though. You know, it would solve a lot of problems if they gave it, if they put that money in the right places. So that I would, that I'm in favor of them doing, but... You know, you can you can kind of understand, uh, you know, why they are, you know, and I think I think we saw the very end of this conversation in an earlier episode, or maybe it was at least mentioned. I feel like we've heard this before, anyway. But the the um yeah, you know, it again, it is this thing of the the rich people, you know, not yeah not doing as much as they can, not doing as much good as as they are clearly able to. And uh, let's see, right, and, and another thing, again, this thing of, you know, criticism of capitalism, where, you know, yeah, the, really the only reason that that this marriage ends up not happening is because he can't provide a large enough dowry, and that is you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, and, and I, I completely disagree with that. You know, they, they say, oh, she's a gold digger. Well, I mean, we have to keep in mind the, the, the limitations put on women. You know, so the, the yeah, she's, she's trying to make sure that she's provided for. You know, the fact that he's... You know, I, I'm not 100% sure how old exactly. He says he's been looking for 40 years. I don't just, he doesn't look 60 to me, but I guess it's possible. Like, I mean, when do you... I feel like if you're looking for someone to marry, you must be around... I honestly, I don't know enough about the, their, their culture. Anyway, but the... the um, let's see, so the, yeah, you know, if, if the two of them were sure that they were provided for, you know, yeah, then someone who asks for an extremely large dowry, you can be sure they are only after a lot of money, you know, but I, I don't think that that was what was happening here, you know, and it was also, like, He's, he's, at his age, he's still working as a servant. You know, he's never going to make a lot of money. 
so yeah and and you know yeah if he's like 60 you know how much longer is he going to be able to keep working you know yeah she she needs him to have a lot of money if she's going to be sure that she's provided for you know so yeah and and you know i i love this detail that you know uh, asep points out you know, I mean, you did just buy Wisnu a motorbike, you know, what, and, and, you know, you get this, and, and also based on the reaction, you get the sense he didn't really need, like, that, that was not actually, that was him spoiling his son, which, you know, some, some rich people do spend a lot of money on their, their own family, but they're unwilling to spend even a little bit of money to help people who are not in their family. You know, and, and yeah, um, Wulan's father is enraged and shouts at him. You know, it's very clear he touched a nerve. And and it is also, you can understand, you know, the... the I, it's, one can understand why he felt it was out of line for Asa to, to bring that up like that. Uh, so, so, yeah, uh, Monique comes to to Asep and they get married and it's very obvious you know the sex is not good for her which I honestly like I appreciate because this is like let's see is it the third it's at least the third couple we've seen you know We've seen Wulan with Essa, which is now also, by the end of this episode, quite soured. We've seen um, Haroon with, with his girlfriend, and now we have this. And the other two times, it seemed to be mutually, you know, something, yeah, something both of them liked. You know, but here it's very clear that she's just like tolerating it, and the the you know yeah it it is this thing of like widows treated very badly. Now I I realize that Asset doesn't realize you know it doesn't seem like she told him what had. Uh, although wait no yeah later he definitely. Knows. Yeah, but it's possible that he hadn't. She hadn't told him at at that point. But but you know, the it's it's the kind of thing like yes, he you know of course has some some sexual urge, but you know there's other ways to to deal with that than you know he he could just help himself or something. You know, it's very clear that she does not desire. You know, she. The, um, it's not true for everyone, but there are some people, if they lose the person that they're in love with, they just don't want to be intimate, uh, you know, again. Or at least for a while, they don't. And, yeah, it's it's this thing of, you know, the, the fact that she's not taken care of by the, the system, you know, the system is happy to, to punish her, when she takes revenge, but they didn't, you know, stop the actual criminals. They didn't cut out the, the weed, and this is sadly, which, again, you know, I, I appreciate she was caught having participated in murdering someone. You know, I, I get why she was arrested, but sadly, a lot of police forces around the world, they really only react to symptoms. They don't go for the root cause. And, let's see, yeah, and uh, Wulan, Wulan is awake. Not woke. Oh, it's, it's a double use or such jokes. Anyway, not jokesters, but jokes. And, yeah, we see that, you know, yeah, Asep and Harun were working together, you know, from the start, you know, and, and he says, you know, they have to believe I'm harmless. And we see the, the watch stolen, 
and I'm slightly torn on whether this is a message of like you shouldn't trust your your servants, you shouldn't trust people beneath you, or that that you consider beneath you, or if it's like a message in favor of treating people who you you know who have a lower status than you. Well, I'm leaning towards the second because that seems consistent with the rest of the, you know, yeah, the, the other, other than this particular one, it really does seem like the, the show has a message of treating people well that are, yeah, um, the good detail that, you know, Monique, she's, she's been waiting for this for so many years, and now that she's finally, you know, in the situation, she doesn't know what to say. And, yeah, we get the, the, some more backstory, and we see that Wulan and Essa were adopted. You know, they are not related by blood to the the men they considered their fathers that, you know, treated them as they were their fathers. And this, of course, explains why the two of them were not attacked when the, the you know, Essa's father and Wulan's, like the rest of her family, have all been very directly attacked like sure there's been like you know there were there were like bugs in in the shower and the food but Bulan herself same for Essa have not been like vomiting up blood nails and and bugs you know all the bugs they've dealt with were exterior from the very start and and yeah you know the the they yeah, the black magic practitioners of the show blame not only the 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 two men, but also the the or or I guess maybe it's just this thing of hurting the people that they treated well, maybe because I'm not sure. Well, let's see. Yeah, for one thing, okay. So if Wulan's mother had not you know, been been with Wulan's father before they got married, then the... Uh, what's the word? Um, that then, then the... the blackmail <clears throat> would not have, have taken place. Uh, Monique's husband would not have tried to blackmail them, which led to, to them having him attacked, which led to him dying. So the, the yeah, there's there's that, and there's maybe some jealousy of Wisnu because he you know nothing happened to his mother and father before the events of the the show. So yeah, and they, I I will say I had not at all guessed that Wulan and Essa were related by blood to the yeah that's a. That's a good twist. Like we we already we we got the detail about adoption in in an earlier episode, but or the yeah the fact that Wulan was not related by blood to to her father, but the yeah um, the um, yeah I did not expect at all for it to be that he he got the kid from someone he was, you know, responsible for, for the death of. And, you know, even if you want to say, well, the, the death itself was accidental, they could have come clean. They, if they, if, if Wulan's father and Mr. Bonden went to the police, you know, they wouldn't even have to, like, Rito Gatot, and I'm afraid I don't remember the name of the third one, you know, they could have just, like, Lay, you know, if they if they laid low, and then the the yeah, you know the two you know high status men, if they went to the police and said, 
you know, we we arrange this, uh, you know, we're 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 sorry, but we're we're accepting punishment, you know. That would at least have been like that would have been a very clear acknowledgement that you did something wrong. It would be a lot harder to justify. I mean, I'm I can imagine Monique might still have, have done it. And and her grandmother as well. And Harun. But there would have been a lot less justification of it. It, it would have, you know, yeah. So, let's see. And, yeah. So, I'm not sure. I guess the idea is supposed to be that Wulan and Essa were such little children that they were not yet able to, to form these, these long-term memories. So, they didn't realize that the people now taking care of them, or maybe they forgot over the years, I guess, is, is also possible. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, we can't remember from our, from our childhoods. And, yeah, um, we realize that the, the, yeah, Wulan and Essa, you know, accidentally in, engage in, in incest. And this is, of course, you know, this is yet again, you know, it basically, everything bad that has, almost everything bad that has happened on the show, we still don't know the, the, all the other killings, you know, that the, that the, the death of Monique and her husband was supposed to look like yet another case of, or, and, yeah, and did end up. You know the the husband. It people did think, oh, this is you know the those serial killers again. That's the only thing. Yeah, we we don't really know how that originated. That was just taken advantage of. But everything else bad that happened in in the show that we're told of, that we see with our own eyes, that happened in the past that we're told about, all of it starts with rich people either doing something that they know they should not do, and, and some of it they even, like... Actually, yeah, come to think of it, I think almost all of it, they even, like, outright say, we shouldn't be doing this, this is wrong. You know, so the... the which, which underlines the fact that not only is it wrong, they know it's wrong. But, yeah, that's one of the things, and the other is when they're treating people of lower status as inherently inferior, you know, shouting at Asep over the 50 million dowry, you know, you could have just said, the answer is still no, you don't have to shout at him, and the, you know, like, Vishnu not having a motorcycle versus Asep getting married and being, you know, maybe being married for the rest of his life. I mean, come on, that's a pretty significant, like, Wisnu will survive without a motorcycle. You know, that's just, yeah. So, the, the you know, this is like, they have drivers, they have cars. He doesn't need a, a personal motorcycle, you know, so, so, just, which I appreciate, we've been shown, you know, we've seen him in the car, so the, the, yeah, that was quite a good, let's see, and, and, yeah, they try to, to get Wulan to, to kill Wisnu, and I appreciate the, the, like, they even say this is the only way to end his pain, like, ah, just so messed up, <clears throat> love it. And, you know, he's, like, bleeding from the eyes. There's some blood coming out of his ears. Like, holy crap. <clears throat> and, yeah. I will say, as soon as Essa said that he would agree to do it, like, I did immediately know he's going to stab one of the others. You know, but... It, they didn't spend forever getting to, to the payoff to that. And I think it does underline these black magic practitioners are so consumed with their urge for revenge that they can't see straight. Like, you really think that telling Essa, 
you know, oh, by the way, you know, the, the, like, for sure, like, it, it's, you know, I mean, later he says he doesn't, he not, he's not sure if they were telling the truth, you know, which is also, like, they didn't actually bring proof, you know, they're, it's, it's their word against the word of their, their fathers, you know, that you, you can't expect to <clears throat> knock someone out and then for them to just believe you against the word of some, someone you've known for, like, 20 years, you know, so, 25 years, I guess, so, yeah, um, yeah, the, the, f they, they legitimately can't imagine that, because, because that's the thing, the extremists are convinced that everybody else is, is, like, they, they don't, they can't really imagine people not being like them, that's something you see, like, if you read manifestos from, from shooters and such, they they often say that they they'll write stuff like I have to do something. We are are going through this this bad thing. Like they think that they're the only ones brave enough to do what everybody wishes they could. What everyone in their in group wishes someone would do, and they just they're the ones brave enough to do it. You know. So so yeah, the black magic practitioners here they're so convinced that this revenge. You know they they can't think of anything else so that's the 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 uh, what's the word they can't really imagine that essa would betray them because because if you think about it like literally all they had to do was step a little bit further away and like maybe be armed have a have a longer weapon so he can't cut you with a knife like if you if they had like machetes or something <clears throat> swords of some kind and yeah, the, there's a there's a struggle, and Monique manages to get some of Wulan's hair, and then she swallows it, which is also just ugh, just disgusting. You know, just like <laughs> like if you've ever had the like found that one of your hairs ended up in your mouth, you you pull it out as quick as you can. Like it feels so gross on the on the tongue, you know, and. To see someone doing it willingly, and then we have the some some more finger breaking and just yeah, and um, and so turns turns his back on Monique, which like at this point, how are you still yeah? But Ulan manages to drown Monique in mud, which again is like ugh, just. Like, it's already, like, the idea of drowning is already really unpleasant. Having someone else forcibly hold you under, like, the, the it's, it's very intentional. It's, it's like, you know, because, and, and, like, let's, like, Wulan has maybe a minute or two where she could be like, oh, what am I doing? No, I don't want to drown someone. No, she, she goes through with it, you know. And then for it to be in mud, like, the, the, the ugh, that, it must taste horrible, you know, just, so, yeah. And, yeah, Essa does die, and we skip forward some months. <clears throat> I'm afraid I forget how many. Um, and, yeah, uh, Wulan is pregnant, which, yeah, that's definitely with with Essa and then some some maggots pop in you know so the grandmother is still out there the curse has not completely ended and you know like the the yeah the grandmother is probably going to target Wulan now there's no one left alive to tell Wulan, or Wisnu, who is is doing it? You know, I I like I guess hypothetically Harna could attempt that um, the the psychic thing where where he it was like he was traveling to the the grandmother again, but didn't go so well the first time. There's not really any reason to think it would go better. You know, nothing has really ch changed. <laughs> Hmm. Everyone involved who knew 
facts have have died. You know, it's not like Wulan could question Monique or Haroon. <clears throat> and yes, so if this legitimately is the last time, and I I do I'm I mean. If they hypothetically made another season, I really think they would have to basically just focus on another family, maybe even basically an entirely different, like, some a, a different black magic practitioner so that it would be fresh again, you know. And you could maybe have a thing at the very start where Wulan dies from, from the curse, and then <clears throat> this new family being attacked can say, oh, wait, this is like that Wulan person, you know, something like that. I quite like a downer ending to, to horror stories. I think it works really well for, for the genre. There's a lot of great horror movies that have upbeat endings, which, you know, I, I've seen some say that you need catharsis after a horror story has has been told i respect that point of view and i know that some of the the um, i specifically heard it in relation to horror for black people and i am not going to to be talking about like oh you know they're that's not at all for for me to to speak on when i watch a you know a lot of the horror I watch, it's it's white people, and when I watch that, I I really like when there's a, a downer ending. And you know, obviously, this is not this. These are Indonesians, but the yeah, I I do think that it works quite well. It has this sort of element of the the there is no way to stop it. You know, the, the, and the fact that she's pregnant now, because they, they didn't have to include that, you know, there's plenty of people who have unprotected sex and don't become pregnant. That doesn't, that doesn't always happen. However, it is very much this thing of the, these two people would never have had sex if the, you know, if Mr. Bonden and Wulan's adoptive father had not split up a family. You know, which is something that you see a lot of powerful people do, you know, just because they can. It especially happened, I, I know that it's, it's something that happened a lot during, you know, American slavery. You know, they would split up families just at, at nothing for, for no good reason. You know, it's the kind of thing, like, if, if a family ends up splitting apart, it should be because... There's some, like, you know, I, I don't think divorce is automatically a bad thing. I think it can make the lives better of the people affected by it. Though, I will acknowledge it sometimes makes it worse. But the, the um, yeah, so, yeah. These two people, the, this incest would never have happened, this incest pregnancy would never have happened if not for the the evil deeds of these rich people the the rich and powerful ruin things not and and here we see it's not only for poor people it's also for their own families you know which you know in real life you know rich and powerful people are responsible for climate change for you know the the I swear I had a second example. A second, maybe I'll think of it later. But yeah, you know they're they're responsible for a lot of of bad things that will affect maybe not themselves but their their offspring, future generations. You know, the it's not they're not going to be able to escape it. How no matter how much they might like to be able to. Um. So the the yeah, you know that's that's what we're seeing here. And it, it's self-perpetuating, you know, the fact that the, the lie led to this and led to this pregnancy where, you know, yeah, like, she's, she's going to have to decide whether to have an abortion, which, contrary to what a lot of 
white conservative men would have you believe is a traumatic experience or if she's going to to you know have have a baby that might have you know genetically yeah so so the yeah it's it's very much this yeah this this it is a logical however you know deeply unpleasant consequence of the the things they've done these these rich powerful people and uh let's see the the Yeah, um, right, uh, yes, in an earlier video I talked about, you know, maybe the, the uh, you know, female black magic practitioner that we hadn't at the time, that we knew was out there, but we didn't know exactly what the connection was, maybe she's related to Harun, maybe it's it's something else, you know, I, I forget exactly what I said, but I think I said that I think it would be interesting if she wasn't related to Haroon, but honestly, I I think it's it's perfectly fine that she was, yeah. Really, my you know, since this is the last video where I talk spoilers, my only real problem with the the show, and I still I'm I haven't been able to find out if the if they just like always um, if it's a thing for cuz cuz I this is probably the only Indonesian thing I've I've watched um I'm I haven't been like avoiding them but the I I don't know if these if if this thing of like having 10 episodes if that's just something that they always do which you know I mean there's plenty of American shows that also insist on having a very specific number of episodes and yeah sometimes they just don't quite have enough you know I think this would have been good if you eliminated a third of the episodes you know I, I wouldn't say that you can just skip entire episodes as it is but there are episodes that though they have the the visceral horror they don't really forward the plot and they don't provide a lot of new backstory and then here near the end we have a lot of backstory in a very short amount of time like let's see i think so yeah this episode and i yeah i think these last 3 episodes or so you know there was a lot where you know i think the very first episode does a really good job setting things up and then I think it's is it maybe the next three or so that let's see yeah because yeah episode five gets us further that's when Reno and Mr. Harna help Wulan you know but there's a couple of episodes there um, that just yeah two or three episodes there at least that just don't really get us any any further and yeah, that's that's too bad. I would hate to think that some people end up, like, you know, thinking that it's not going to improve and end up just not finishing the the show. Because, you know, if you like the first episode, you'll you'd be missing out if you don't watch the, you know, the entire run.